Hi, I'm Bryce at Phytech Fuel Injection. Today we're going to go over some questions that we gathered from social media and we're going to answer them for you. All right, so let's jump into it. Our first question here is uh, from YouTube. It's WalkerFit91. He says that he has a 30,008 Mean Street EFI system and he's asking, is swapping to the new ECU necessary or is it simply an upgrade option? Uh, to answer this really quickly for you, the basic version of this is the software and the ECU have been updated over time. You don't have to go to the new type ECU. You could even update our oldest first system ever sold to the latest software. So updating software, I would say don't worry about it unless you're doing a major change to the engine, then you might as well because you got to start over. Updating to the latest uh, ECU, not really necessary unless something goes wrong with the old ECU. Then you just purchase a new one, put it on, and you're good to go. The next question that we have off of YouTube is uh, Jeremy Patterson 2856. He says he has a dual fan setup and he's trying to set up the coolant temperature sensor from one of the EFI systems as well as a vintage air control system that turns on at 190 degrees. Since he has two fan controls, he's going to use one of them with the EFI system, the other one with the vintage air. Uh, his question is how high or low can the on temperature be for the temperature sending unit on the EFI system? So if you go into the initial setup of any of the EFI systems, you can go into the fan settings. The fan on setting, if you hit the edit button, it'll show you a little digital pad where you can plug in the number, but really small in the top right corner, it'll say a minimum and a maximum. For the cooling fans, the minimum is 120 degrees on and the maximum is 220 degrees on. So your adjustment range is in between there. Uh, the next one on YouTube is BKing32. They are saying that they have long tube headers and their system is running rich on both banks and he's not sure what is causing this. Put it simple, not sure if the long tube headers has anything to do with that, but if the system is running rich, there's a multitude of things that you want to look into. The very first thing that I would do is in the handheld, go to the fault code section. See if there's a fault code for something. Maybe the O2 sensor has failed. Maybe you have an RPM noise code. Maybe the coolant temperature sensor is throwing a code. Something may be failing, which is causing the system to read rich. Sometimes it's something external. So if you have something like an exhaust leak, which may be where this question is stemmed, uh, the exhaust leak would allow oxygen into the exhaust and that oxygen gets to the oxygen sensor and makes the system read lean. Because the computer sees that as lean, it tries to add more fuel to the engine, but that exhaust leak doesn't go away just because more fuel is added. So the engine keeps learning to run richer, 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 and the problem doesn't go away. But there's other things that can cause that too. Uh, simple things like uh, if you have a vacuum leak, or a cylinder misfire, like you have burnt plug wires or something, that can cause uh, rich conditions as well. So there's a few things to take a look at. Check your fault codes, check for vacuum leaks, exhaust leaks, and check for misfires. Simple way for the misfires is if you got an infrared temp gun, temp each of the primary tubes on the exhaust. If you have a cold cylinder, that's probably the cylinder that's misfiring. If you have more questions on that one too, check out our tech team, give them a call, or send them an email at techmail at phytechefi.com. The next one that we have on YouTube is from James Long 5964 it says, uh, I have a two inch spacer on a brand new Phytech EFI Easy Street. I have to keep on the throttle to keep it alive. Do I need to adjust the throttle for more air? Uh, the simple answer to that one is yes. It sounds like you need to open up the throttle more we do have a tech video. It's on how to set the throttle properly using the IAC adjustment. The IAC adjustment is under the initial setup section of the handheld. And then you refer to the idle air control reading on the dashboard section of the handheld and you wanna get it somewhere between three and 10. If the engine's not running on its own without you putting your foot on the throttle, you may also notice that you have a loud whistling noise coming from the engine, that is the idle air motor being completely pegged open and the computer's done everything that it can to give more air to the engine. So now you need to supplement it with opening the throttle more. So check out that video. That video will walk you through the steps. 
and then from there you should have no problems with idling. Uh, the next question that we have off of YouTube is from Jeff Scott 9157 Why does the ECU plug need to be pointy down? So the ECU plug, I think what they're referring to is with an LS system or an ultra ram system. Uh, if you notice that the stickers on them read where the plug is pointing down. The major reason for that is preventing moisture from gathering inside of the plug socket. So if you had the ECU so the connector was pointing up, you have the weather pack seal and all the wires on the back side. If water or moisture gets on those wires, it could seep through the connector and then you have basically a cup for the, the connector that will hold all the moisture. Over time and more and more moisture, those pins will start to rust and then you lose connectivity to the ECU. So that's why we always recommend connector pointing down because if water splashes on it, it'll run past the connector and will gather it. If you have moisture is a concern that you have as well, another thing to make sure is that the connector, when you plug it in the wiring harness, you want to create a loop off the bottom. So if you get water in the harness, it'll run down kind of like a P-trap. It'll drop off the bottom, it'll drip off the bottom. And another thing to protect the connector a little bit more is if you put a little bit of dielectric grease in the connector, that'll prevent moisture from getting to the pins inside as well. So our next question is, calibration unlock isn't in their menu uh, when they're looking for it. So the calibration unlock feature is under the display setup section of the handhelds that we offer now. The reason why you may not be seeing that selection is you may not have the newest version of software or you may have the older style handheld. The older versions and the older handhelds don't have this feature. So in essence, they're permanently disabled. It's not a major thing, but if you do have it and you're trying to make menu selections and it keeps reverting, you always want to check out the display setup section and make sure the calibration unlock is disabled. And again, that's on our latest version of softwares. Uh, with the handhelds, with the cable out of the bottom, the large format, with the push button pad to the right of the screen. The next question is Smallmouth Freaks uh, 7609. Will the system function properly if the knock sensors are deleted? Um, being that this was on a YouTube video on the Ultimate LS, I'm going to assume that you're using the Ultimate LS. Uh, if you disable the knock sensors, the system will run. There is an ignition curve within the system. You can adjust it. And if you shut off the knock sensors, I really encourage that you do adjust it because the computer can't detect knock anymore and it can't take timing out of the motor. So if it gives too much timing and you start getting spark knock or something, the computer's not going to do anything about it. So again, uh, to adjust that, it's under the Go or the Phytech tuning section on the handheld and it's under the spark map. And from there, you could adjust the ignition timing based upon RPM and the load of the motor. All right, now jumping over to Facebook. If there's an exhaust leak and can settings are too high, go EFI 4 600 system, what can cause it to run rich? If there's an exhaust leak, there's oxygen that will get into the exhaust that gets to the O2 sensor. The O2 sensor is gonna read lean and it's gonna add more fuel. That's the simple answer there. Um, Another thing that could cause overfueling too that a lot of people don't really realize is really big cams with a lot of valve overlap. That valve overlap is opening the in intake and the exhaust valve at the same time. So there's a little bit of um, intake charge going into the exhaust that's going to get to the O2 sensor. So in those motors um, with really big cams, sometimes you'll find that the engines will idle better if you target an air fuel ratio that's leaner than an actual AFR, something like 15 to one air fuel ratio on a real big camshaft. Uh, that sometimes will clean up the auto quality of them. Uh, the next question is, can I open and clean the 100 micron filter uh, before the pump? So I'm assuming you're using one of the inline fuel pump kits from us, the 100 micron filter and the 10 micron filter for that matter. You can unthread them. There's a a hex key on both sides of the filter cartridge. If you just turn it counterclockwise from each end, uh, the whole cartridge will unthread and the internal side you can pull out and clean. The 100 micron and the 10 micron are both stainless steel mesh. So using a mild detergent like a 409 or whatever you have, you wash it out, 
Uh, you could spray it out with carb cleaner, allow it to dry, put it back together. You could definitely service them. And then if you need a replacement uh, cartridge filter, the part numbers for that is the part number of the filter itself. So 55002 uh, would be the 10 micron filter. 55002-1 is that filter element itself. The last one that we got here, it says they got the Phytech 400. No start unless they spray it with some starting fluid. Uh, runs fine once it starts. Battery is fully charged. Tax signal is present during cranking and fuel pressure is good. Um, anyone experience this one? If you're finding that you're having to spray some starting fluid to get the engine to start and then it stays running, there's probably a combination of two things going on here. Number one, I would recommend getting the engine started up to temperature and do a throttle adjustment. Uh, make sure that your IAC steps are somewhere between 3 and 10 when the engine's at operating temperature, idling and park or neutral, whether it's an automatic or a manual transmission. From there, we know that the system is set up to where it can give the proper amount of air to the motor. At that point, you would start looking at fueling. If you're finding spraying some starter fluid in works, what you may want to do is you may want to increase your prime shot to the system as well as increase some of the cranking fuel. Another thing that I would always encourage taking a look at too is what is your ignition timing at? So on a small block Chevy, if you're running six or eight degrees initial, you could probably increase your timing a little bit to like 10, 12 degrees and you may get a little bit better start quality out of the engine. Um, another thing to do too is when you start messing with ignition timing, uh, you may end up finding that you want to recurve the ignition. But um, we do find out a lot of times that the ignition timing is just too low, which is causing the heart, the heart starts. That concludes the questions that we have today. If you have questions that you want to ask, be sure to comment them on this video and then they'll be sure to start handing them to me and we'll start answering them on the next uh, Q&A session. So thank you for tuning in to this week on uh, Phytech. If you have any questions on this stuff, um, definitely comment down below or visit our tech team at techmail at phytechefi.com or give us a phone call at 951-340-2624. Thanks again for watching.